Hey everyone, uh, my name is Alexander Monaco, and uh, this is the wish list portion of um, the EA Smartass uh, video series. Um, so at this point, you should be, if you watched the previous videos, you would be updated with the EA. You've seen my Confluence page and the work that I've done to optimize the EA to make it more understandable, such as adding uh, code snippets, uh, you can see up here, UML diagrams, um, and uh, the research page up here, um, as well as the work I've done with regards to optimizing it uh, over here and here. Um, and uh, in this section, I'm going to just talk a little more in depth on, depth on past results, um, what I've done and what can be done that I think would improve the EA. Um, so to start, uh, the work that I've mostly done uh, with respect to improving this EA was through the use of optimizations. My most recent optimization being, uh, if I scroll down, my most recent optimization being the one that you will see right here and here. Uh, and the logic behind the, uh, the change in this EA uh, can be seen. Um, the link doesn't seem to be here right now, but I did make a video explaining um, why I made this change. You can take a look at it in the description uh, below in the video, or um, it's also going to be in this playlist. You can take a look at it. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, so um, before I go more into the reason for that change and talk about what could be done, I'm going to add one little uh, tidbit of information that would help you guys. So again, um, most of the work I've done was through optimizations. Um, in Forex, you're able to save optimizations and reapply them for future use or testing and whatnot. So I figured I'd do that as well. Um, so in the EA Smartass uh, branch, um, which is something I gave a tutorial on viewing uh, in, um, in, a, uh, in another video. Um, so you're here in this section. Um, I made a folder called Optimize Sets. You can take a look. And it shows all of my previous sets here. So let's say you clone this branch. All you have to do is uh, get the folder um, and your test skin 4x. All you got to do is go to expert properties and uh, load the... Uh, so here you can see all the input parameters that are set in the EA. But, you know, once you once you get the optimized sets folder, simply get into it, click whatever version you like. Of course, this is the most recent one, V6, and it gets the output that I showed you before. Um, and you can just click it. Okay, and now you have it set and you can just run it here and then you get the results that I have shown before. So now that we um, established how to uh, do optimizations, I'm going to start talking about the uh, results that I've got before. So in my most recent figure, um, I figured it was better because uh, the EA was more reactive. The results here show that there were losses, but also decent profit at the end of my testing. Um, gross profit over here from the historical period from January 1st all the way to June 30th. Uh, gross profit of 1400 or yeah, 14000 I'm sorry. $14,000 uh, and, you know, gross profit of 2000 But as you can see, uh, there were um, there were losses, but at the end there was decent profit at the end of my testing. Uh, but my professor or mentor, uh, also project manager, uh, Masood Tajadi. He suggested that the profit is the main goal here. Uh, regardless of the line uh, rising or falling, we need to see the line, rise, uh, the line rise higher than it falls, and we need to see it rise more often. Um, I have the same, uh, I have this kind of result in my most recent optimization, um, version six. Um, Version 6 results in a similar graph to my uh, previous test, but the profit, uh, or, yeah, this is version 6, um, but version 5, the previous version, uh, has uh, these results, um, but the profit is much higher uh, due to me just uh, playing around with the lot size uh, per purchase. Um, 
The thing is, though, the issue I've had with all my previous optimizations, um, and I've been trying to answer to in the most recent one, um, was because, uh, or the problem was, uh, essentially, um, if you go here, it's more prominent here. Um, you can uh, take a look here. So, if, as you can see, the EA, for a good period of time, is making money um, at a decent period, nice and consistently. And then suddenly, um, you know, there's this rise and drop. Um, we, you know, before that was just a conversation about, you know, close and stop. And I thought that was it. But once you look at the journal, you take take a look here. The um, the last actual buy and sell action was done all the way in April, April 21st of 2017. And the last, um, the last, you know, action that the EA took was a close that stopped at the very end, you know, getting us this giant, you know, like carrot here. Um, and, uh, I, I, from why, why what I used to understand, or from what I understood after um, learning this, uh, this was due to the use of, uh, if I go to my optimization, this was due to the use of automatic stop loss uh, in my previous optimizations. Let me load the last version. Optimize sets. And this is how you do it. You load it. Um, but I would always have automatic stop loss set to true in my previous optimizations. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can take a look at the, the you know my further explanation of automatic stop loss in my code review video, um, which I'll include a link to, or is also in the uh, playlist. Um, but uh, you know, in in what I describe, it's supposed to uh, work as intended, but uh, for some reason, it doesn't seem very effective in doing so. Um, from what I've gathered, I felt as though it was simply better to. Uh, let me show in my most recent version. I figured it was uh, actually better to turn off automatic stop loss and just create a static stop loss right here. Um, but uh, and also set minimum take profit as well. I, I I figured it would be better to just you know have before have the better uh, have the EA um, automatically do these things. But um, from what I've gathered, it would just result in that carrot image you saw before. Now, the final optimization I made is by no means the best, but I believe it does a good job at highlighting the issues that need to be tackled in this expert advisor, and it's that despite the fact that there are parameters here that tell the user that the EA can automatically calculate and modify values during runtime of the EA, um, in reality, this is not exactly the case. If I were to make adjustments to this EA, um, in code, I would figure out a way to either make these options actually useful to the user or remove them and simply find some kind of combination of these optimization op excuse me of these optimization parameters that would make this EA more effective. Um, so all right guys, so to summarize this uh, this section, I simply showed you guys what I've done in this expert advisor, showed you guys um, uh, showed you guys issues I found when improving it and I explained things I wished I could add or change in this EA. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, thank you all, and good luck.